In today's video, we're doing a review of Grammarly and specifically, is it worth it to go from the free version to the paid version? So whether you are a student, an employee, an individual, or a team, Grammarly has a lot of different features for you, but like, is it actually worth it to go into those features? Some of the things that we're gonna be talking about in today's video are things such as uptalk and hedging. These are two things that are really important for me because I have a tendency to come off less confident with my writing and delivery, and that is something that I wanna work with and Grammarly can help support that. So let's start off with the free version and then work our way up and see how it compares when you go to premium. So whether you're on Chrome, this is what it'll look like to add the Chrome extension. Now, if I was to go to Safari, you can see that they have have a, an extension on Safari as well. So let's say that you were to get set up on Chrome. The way that it works is they'll add an extension to your browser and they have a demo document that kind of highlights some of the functionality of the tool. So I'm gonna skip the tour right now because that's something that you can do on your own. But what I wanna do is actually go through all the basic functions very quickly and highlight those, but then show you what it looks like when you get to premium. So some of these are pretty simple, like misspellings. It's very easy, one click and you can change the spellings. But effect, if you look at this, you know, that's one that I always do wrong. Uh, obviously, this is kind of uh, tailored made to all the common mistakes that we make as users. I'm terrible with commas as well. Uh, so it's very easy to just kind of work through this. So you get the general idea. In my opinion, at this point, it's very similar to a basic spell check. So this is kind of where Grammarly, even on the free version, starts to set itself apart from basic spell checks. And what I mean by that is if I was to copy this and go and start a Google Doc here and I hit enter, so you'll notice that from the Google spell check side of things, there are no issues with this sentence, but Grammarly is showing you issues. So let's say I was to copy and paste this in. Obviously this is the wrong form of there. Uh, this is what it looks like on the Google uh, spell check. Now, if you want, there is a Grammarly specifically for Chrome, which is in beta testing as of 2021. So if I turn that on now and I was to refresh this, now what you would see is the red underlining is Grammarly. So that's good to know. If you're writing something and Google's trying to give you a spell check, that might be that blue zigzags uh, with Grammarly, it's the red. Uh, and then you can correct it that way. Now let's take a look at what Grammarly is suggesting though, as far as this being a little bit too wordy. So blue underlines, consider shortening this phrase. So this is something that's really helpful for me because I tend to write too long and my sentences can be a little bit confusing. So again, if we click here, it says an unnecessary wordy sentence Sentence. That is me to the T. So if you click this, what it's going to do is it's going to just remove that. Blue underlines indicate that Grammarly is spotted in an unnecessarily wordy sentence. To save you a few clicks, there is a link for Grammarly in the description of this video. It is free for you if you want to stick with the free version. But if you do go with the paid version, I may get a small commission from that. And I appreciate it because it helps to support my YouTube channel. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned about hedging. And hedging is when you use words such as these, probably, most likely, generally, typically. So going back to this, the reason that you wanna remove that word possibly is you're using softer language and this makes you less authoritative. And I struggle with this for sure. I'll write out emails or documents and I'll write things like, I think, possibly, probably. So if we click this, all it's gonna do is it's gonna remove that so that the writing is a little bit more concise. And then if you go to this, it says revise a wordy sentence in an effortless manner, effortlessly revise a wordy sentence. Grammarly is able to shift the words for you so that it reads a little bit more concisely. So this is pretty clever. And what they do here is they tell you, hey, there are 13 additional writing issues, but that's in the premium version. So that's kind of how they get you with the upsell. So we just highlighted some of the differences just based on like Google spell check with Google Docs versus Grammarly. So now what I want to do, though, is I want to highlight all this text and I'm going to copy and paste it into this document. So then when we go to uh, Grammarly premium, you can start seeing the differences between premium and a basic spell check that's provided by Google. So this would be a good time to talk about the pricing. So when you hit this page, as far as trying to figure out what's the right fit for you, the easiest way to do this is if you're a student, you're in the middle. If you're a business, it really starts with three users or more. So if you don't have three users or more, it's not even gonna allow you to pick a plan for business. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with the premium for individuals. Uh, I am kind of bummed though, because I would love to have the snippets feature, which is where you can just like have canned messages that you can easily pull up. But later in the video, I will show you a tool that you can use as a workaround if that's something that you're interested in. So in my particular case, I'm going to go with the monthly because I'm just interested in showing you how the features are different on the premium service. 
One of the cool things with Grammarly is it allows you to set goals so that you can tailor your writing and tone to your style. So for me, I wanna be knowledgeable. I tend to go on uh, informal. I'd say for domain, I'm typically kind of more casual, uh, as I just said, kind of. Uh, tone, I wanna be optimistic, friendly, and respectful. And then intent is to inform and tell a story. So I'm gonna click done right here. Now, let's take a look at what has changed here now that we're in premium. So I just copied and pasted that original document here and you can see that this is mentioning that there are nine additional suggestions that I can review in Grammarly. So I'm gonna click this button right here. So this popped open here and I'm gonna start with this. So to correctly write a sentence, to write a sentence correctly. So just simple kind of just word choice, right? And then right here we have formality, I wanna to want to, okay? So then don't you think, uh, that one's check your tone. Uh, we're gonna put in a period there. Uh, and then this one is businessmen. Uh, it should be business people or people in business. I'm gonna go with pe or business people. And then very helpful, uh, constructive. And these are the things that you're not gonna be able to pick up on a basic spell checker, right? So I wanted to do a plagiarism check and I thought an easy one to do is I'm a Buffalo Bills fan and I would take an article that's from May 6th. So right now it's June 29th, 2021 as I'm making this video. So we're going back uh, almost two months. So I'm just curious if Grammarly is able to check that. So when you're actually in the web tool right here, what I did is new document and I'm gonna copy and paste this information in here. So this is already giving us some uh, examples here of things that could have been cleaned up. So this is interesting because this is being pulled from an actual newspaper. And what they're saying here is that this should be before and then cleaning this up. Again, this is a professional writer wrote this and it said pre-draft were the Chiefs, uh, was the Chiefs and Bucks. So now what I wanna do is uh, we have cleaned up their writing, but I wanna do a plagiarism check and see if this works for an article that was written just a couple months ago. So it's interesting because it didn't pull up the original article that I was pulling this from, which was the uh, Democrat and Chronicle, but it was able to pull up this USA Today article, which also mentions this. So you can see that that sentence right here is exactly the same. And then this particular one was published May 5th. So it looks like USA Today, it was able to pull, but not necessarily the Democrat and Chronicle. So depending on how you're planning on using Grammarly, it's really different from one user to the next. If you're a student who's just interested in spell check, that is different than a business that is interested in having a theme and a tone in the way that their employees are writing. So earlier in the video, we covered the importance of not using hedging terms. So these are things like probably, most likely, generally, typically, and Grammarly is gonna help you remove those from your writing, but when you're actually in the meeting, so the meeting might be something like you're in a job interview, or you're trying to ask for a raise, or you're trying to communicate effectively with a certain level of authority without sounding arrogant. So that is where something called uptalk comes into play. And what I want to talk about in this next video is uptalk and why that is so important for removing that from your speech. So again, you can get that raise, you can get that job, and you can speak with more authority and confidence. So I'm going to catch you guys in that next video.